Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to Campbell's Creation. I'm Ellen. Let me um, see, can I get this pulled up so I can uh, have a way to have my, see who in the group be closer to me. And today, as you see here, you see in the background, and it is 2.5 inches blocks that I'm creating like panels. And I have a panel here that I have sewn into scripts, and um, I have to step over to my ironing board. Knee up, not down here. I'm going to step over here right quick and iron this panel before I cut it. So I'm going to move this a little bit. And I'm sorry, I got my back turned at the moment, but this is how I have to do it. I just have a little water in the spray bottle here that I misc it lightly and take my iron. That kind of helps my seams to set and stay and my thread won't unravel too quickly. But this is how I do it. Kind of works pretty good for me here. Then I miss this a little bit, a little bit more. Don't take a lot. And I'm making this quilt rather large. So, hello, um, hello, Kathy Crafts Inc. Quilts and Crafts. She said, good morning. How you doing? Good morning. Hi, Sandra K. Welcome me in. Hi, the Confident Quilter. He, they say, hi, Miss Ellen. Hello. Hi, Sandy. She said, hi, Miss Ellen from California. Welcome me in. Y'all, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, uh, and I need to set the hood uh, the thread in the seams so I can cross cut them. I'm making this kind of pattern right here. And these are going to be 2.5 inch cuts. And to me, this is just a quicker way to do it. And then once you get them cut, you can chain piece them back together in order. And the way I do it, I line up my seams and I don't worry about any overhang or anything because that can get trimmed away later. But I have to line up those seams to get it to create this kind of pattern. Like you got the blues and the blue with the little pops of red in it on this side and this side. It's like on both sides. And then you have the green and white, green and white, green and white. It's like I'm purposely doing it that way. So and yes, this is the same quilt top that I started with uh quilting for the soul. 
I have like two of these panels done and I finished this one so I can show y'all what I was doing. And this is the second one. I'm going to show y'all how I cut it. Anybody new coming in? Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're so happy and glad you could join us today. I just need to finish uh, setting these scenes a little bit. I like this method so much more than I like doing it one by one or, or change piece in the uh, blocks by blocks. This way, I get to... Uh, change piece strips instead of blocks. And I'm going to show y'all how I do it in just a minute. I got a little bit more to go here. I try to spray it down so it'll be enough to set the seams and stuff and the thread. Because I don't like for my thread to unravel. It makes it more tedious to me when it's unraveled like that. That's why I tell everyone all the time that I try to lock in all my seams. I lock some in to keep it from falling apart. I don't want to invest all that good old hard work into it and then it falls apart. Now, that would irritate me. <laughs> All right. So, I'm going to set my iron here on the floor. And I'm going to take this strip. Y'all see how long this strip is? This strip is three cuts with a fabric long i put three of them together now i'm gonna fold it i always fold right sides together and this just how i cut it so all of my uh strips will come out nice Let me check my messages right quick. Hi, June. Hi, hop to it. Good morning, Miss Ellen, they say you know. Hi, Pamela. She said, hi, Miss Ellen. Sandra said, beautiful quilt hanging there. Thank you, Sandra K. Thank you. I'm preparing myself, y'all. I keep talking about this long arm. I'm hopefully to get soon. But to tell you the truth, I put on order. I put two long arms on order. Okay. Now, when I get them like this, it ain't got to be perfectly even, but I want them lined up where I can fold them. Fold it and continue to fold it because I'm working in a tight space. Sort of like a rolling fold. Move this chair back. Fold it. Fold it. It just helped me to get more out of my fabrics when I do it this way. And I always wanted to do an all-over quilt like this. And now I have the chance to do it. And when I finish this top, I'm planning to quilt this up live <laughs> on the Zoom with uh, Quilting for the Soul. June the 24th. So if any of y'all interested, do join us. 
Okay. Y'all see I'm getting a little dizzy right on here. Okay. Let me see how I can not do this. Slide my chair back so I can uh my cutting table is a little low, so I'm gonna angle it down so y'all can see what I'm doing here. Well, actually, I cut the long way because my mat is a little worn, but <laughs> I don't have so many of these mats, y'all. And I didn't want to use the AccuQuilt to cut this. So, I just got it kind of like a rolling fold. And this helps, too, when you need to line up your top layer. Now, what I do is I adjust this mines and line it up. I choose a line here, down low, and then on the side. To make sure I got it as evenly as possible. Let me see. I don't want to miss anybody's comment. Hello, hello, hello. Sharon uh, Frampton, hello. Welcome in. Welcome. I'm so glad to have you in. Okay. I have my Martelli cutter. And... I check twice before I cut to make sure everything is lined up like it should be. And then I go ahead on and adjust that edge across the top. Now, uh, due to my mat being the way it is, I have to sometimes trim twice. And then I go ahead on and measure out two and a half inches. And I'm kind of doing this one layer by one by one layer cuts. And it comes out like that. Now I can lay those to the side and continue cutting. I can cut two by two. But today, I want to make sure everybody just understand what I'm doing. And don't forget, all these is just strip cuts, 2.5 inch strip cuts. And I sewn them together like this. This is four different colors I'm using here, and I just cut them like this. And that kind of helps me uh, to get this pattern. I make two of those, and I put them together, and then I press the seams to sit. And I just cross cut them. It take a little time, but you know, it'll come together nicely. But the strips I'm cutting and putting over here is the one that I will be chain piecing. She said, I need your expertise, Sharon. Let me see. See, can I move that up? I'm so glad I found your channel. Thank you, Sharon. What is it that I might be able to help you with? I left my email in the description of this video. If you need to contact me personally, you may do so. Any and everyone is welcome. What I do is all for free. I love all of my subscribers and I teach us or show you how I do things so you can learn and do the same. And I basically started YouTube just for that purpose. So I can show others what I learned from my mother. And what I learned from others as well. Because when me and my mother was sewing, I was the only one could sew on a machine. I took home economics in high school. So my son go all the way back to high school. 
This is not something I started overnight or during the pandemic. I chose YouTube to put it on YouTube because I knew that would be a place that I could save my uh, videos. I wouldn't have to worry about, you know, where can I store them or put them. And eventually, I would love, 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 love to have a specialist or someone that know how to download these videos to the CD-ROMs and save them on a ROM, CD-ROMs. Make a collective file, Campbell's Creations. That's my goal. And hopefully I can get it done. Um, Sharon says, everything I'm starting over after about 20 years, I like your setup, how you're able to sit while working. That is awesome. But the thing is, Sarah, I'm using what I have. This little table here, it's just a folding food tray table. And it allows me to sit down and I have an office chair that I really work in when I'm sewing or when I'm doing anything down in this space because this really is my sewing area. But right now, ooh, I'm all packed up. I'm all packed up planning to move out of this house. As, as soon as I get my uh, vehicle of choice, I don't know if it's going to be a school bus or a class A RV. And I have saw, seen one beautiful class A and it is beautiful. I'm just waiting on my finances to clear. And I like these little old blocks. You see, I got it fold, right? So when it opens out, it opens like that. And when I go to sew them, I put a white in, like put it on the needle first, and then I put a green in on top to make the long strips and that's how I do them. But you can chain piece them, just chain piece them. Uh, hi Mary, how you doing? I'm so glad you could join me today. She said, hi everyone, just saying hi and need to move on, take care. Thank you for stopping by saying hello Mary, thank you. Then when I um, uh, need more cuts, I slide my uh, fabric up to the guided line and I keep it lined it up on my line at the bottom. That way I know I'm making straight cuts. And I'm making six of these panels, y'all. I measured the one I'm through with right here. It's 88 inches long. And that's pretty much what I'm looking for because I'm going to put a border around it. Maybe three borders. But um, that would make it definitely at least 100 inches or more. And hopefully I can get it uh, padded. As I say, I call it patent when you, um, <laughs> what you call it? binding, but when you putting your quilt, making a sandwich out the quilt, I call that padded out. So, but only my padding out going to be the quilting batten. I'm going to get some 80-20. And I like putting two battings in my quilts. For some reason, I like, when I think of quilt, I think I want to be warm. So I make all of mine to produce warm. warm. I'm going to keep a check on my battery. 
my last live, my battery kind of played out on me. So I'm trying to make sure my computer is good. Because I was looking at it saying, oh, I'm going to have to get another computer. And if I do have to get another one, I definitely want an Apple, uh, uh, Apple Mac, well, laptop. To me, Apple products, I just love them. They holds what I need them to hold. And I'm using my cutting mat with it have the lines in it, and I'm lining up my measurement to 2.5 or two and a half inches, and then I'm cutting them crossways. Look like this uh Martelli might need a blade change. Strange thing about it is <laughs> I don't know how to change the blade. They seem to be so complicated when it comes down to changing out that blade. Other than that, they are super great for people with uh hand issues or wrist problems, arthritis, all of that. They are super great. They take the pressure off. And they are Martelli cutters. Um, Hi, Dora Camarina. How you doing? She said, hello, Ellen. I finally caught you live. Yay. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I'm happy you can join us. Do make yourself comfortable. Anybody have any questions if I can answer? I would definitely try. And then if I can't answer it, someone else in the chat might can answer for you. I appreciate each and every one of y'all. Now, I got this fold like this. I'm going to show you how to fold it to cut double strips. Now, one end is a little wonky. See that wonkiness hanging? One end is a little wonky than the other one. So, I'm going to put it. Well, the wonkiness won't even matter. And then I'm going to turn it so I can see the wonkiness. Now, when I make this cut, y'all, it just going to um, line it up. And I'm going to take off this wonky part. If it ain't up full enough, put it in place. I always check twice and cut once. Okay, that looks good. I'm going to check it one more time. Okay. All right. See, I got some scraps and leftovers. I'm dropping some. I'm going to have to sweep. Okay, now I continue with my cuts, and now I have two. See here? That just helped me to get my cutting done a little quicker. And I'm cutting by hand. I'm not using a machine because 
everybody don't have an AccuQuilt cutting machine. And you literally could just sit here and cut it. Y'all see it getting up to be a little pile? Today is a good day for this for me. <laughs> Uh, Sharon says, there's a YouTube slowing, showing how to change the blade on your Martelli. Yes, just Google it. I will, I will. Um, I know uh, a quilter that did a YouTube thing on how to change your Martelli blade as well, so... I can probably look them up or, you know, look, just look, Google to see what I can find. These blades are awesome. Y'all remember I had surgery on my wrist. I can use this hand now. <laughs> I'm so happy I can. One while I couldn't do much or nothing with that hand. I was kind of depressed behind it. A little depressed. Because I couldn't use my hand. Uh-oh. And I'm trying to line up my bottom line. Okay. And I dropped my ruler. Sometimes I still have to go back, measure it out, make sure I'm right. I don't want anything too big or too small because it's going to throw everything off. If it's around the edges or the bottom or something, I can, okay, I can deal with that. That'll be my closing out. But I want. All of my blocks will be the same size. And you can't be afraid. You have to jump on in there and get the cutting. And I kind of like these quilts. I've been intending to make one for the longest. It was on my bucket list to do. But now it's going to be a reality. And I give y'all another tip. I don't start where when I'm doing a sew along with someone. It might help you. You might choose to do it or you might not. But I'm going to put it out there. When you're doing a sew along with someone, go through your pattern. If it's going to be a book or whatever it is and you have to make maybe let's say 30 different blocks go on and cut all of your blocks out into a kit go on and cut them out into a kit and once you get them cut out into that kit i put my blocks in ziploc bags and i take a marker and write on it what it is if the block is called turn dash block i put churn dash on it if it's called a Sawtooth star, I put sawtooth star on there. And when I go and get them cut out in kits like that, when I can sit down and sew, I can sit down and just go block, 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 block till I'm done. That's the new thing I learned to do. Um, hi, Denise So Patchy 33. She said, Hello, Miss Ellen, and everyone. Thumbs up. She reminded everybody to give me the thumbs up. Thank you, Denise Opachi33. Please give me the thumbs up. It helps other people to find my channel. Anybody trying to learn or beginners to start quilting, it will help them to find me a little bit easier. Thank y'all for giving me the thumbs up. Um, I find those tips to be very helpful. That's one of the reasons I started off making kits. 
I was going to put all my fabric. I was going to be sewing in a kit. And y'all know this is some of it because I used the Acu Quilt. And I had kind of made this. See all this I still got left? I had 22 yards of fabric right here that I just measured out and cut it up into 2.5 inch strips. And now I want to make a quilt. I can just sit down and sew this quilt. Cut one time to cut. Do anybody find this um, helpful? I like lining them up on these lines. When I first started cutting fabric for myself, y'all, I was lost, 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 like lost in space. <laughs> I was lost. But I had to sit down and reteach myself how to read a ruler. I sure did. I had to reteach myself. And YouTube University helped. It helped. And it's important to know a lot of your uh, inches in sewing and quilting because I've been sewing since I was about eight years old. I started off sewing by hand with a needle. But the thing is, once I got introduced to the sewing machine, I liked it, the sewing machine. And my mama had went out to one of the th thrift stores, I imagine. And she purchased a sewing machine. Y'all, my mama couldn't sew no more than a man in the moon. She couldn't sew. She always had me to sit down. I had to maintenance the sewing machine. I had to do everything for the sewing machine. So after she got that sewing machine, I made sure that I took home economics at school so I could learn more about it. I was interested. I was very interested, and I didn't mind sewing because at that point, before she got the sewing machine, I used to thread needles for my mama before I leave home to catch the school bus. And it had got to the point to where my mama couldn't really see too good, and I had to thread like 20 needles for her so she can enjoy what she loved to do while I was going to school. And honey... When she got that sewing machine, I was so happy. I was like, let me check this out and see how it sews. That's probably why I know I'm going on and on and on, but that's probably why I do like older machines. Yes. Uh, you can a little bit. Thanks. Sorry about that, y'all. That's my daughter. She cooking. But yes, I love the sewing with my mama. And I had older sisters that my mama really didn't have to really invite nobody to come to the house much to sew because she had five girls. My mama had five girls and at least four of us was round that quilt sewing. And that was make all of us except my baby sister my younger sister she didn't like someone she would rather be outside playing and that was okay at that time long as we wasn't doing no harvesting work long as it wasn't harvesting she was good but when harvesting season came in where we had to start canning peas and making the corn and putting it into containers y'all getting ready for the winter everybody participated and i liked it that as well my mom used to have fig trees and y'all peach trees we had about 10 or 15 peach trees around the house where we could just gather up all the peaches my mama would can them peaches we didn't throw nothing away 
We had fig trees. My mama would make fig preserve. All that stuff was good. Even when I go home now, I be uh, looking for my neighbor that do some candy. And she makes jelly. She was from a large family as well, but they had a small farm. And it be so good. So good. I kind of miss being home because I used to preserve pears and peaches and apples and all that good stuff. All of it. When you leave the country and step into the city, <laughs> you in a new life zone. I think I'm going to be able to get one more cut. Check twice, cut once. All right, got me a two point inch block, and then I have some leftovers. Now, see, I'm not gonna throw this away. Next time y'all see me crumbing or something, I better add this into a crumb quilt. I saw a crumb quilt cover the blade. I have to put that blade protection back on in case any of my grandchildren just happen to come up while I'm sewing or cutting. They won't grab this and cut their hands. So let me move this little table here. Okay. I kind of picked up my uh, iron, move these crumbs. Okay, I'm going to move my camera a minute here, y'all. Mm. I'm knocking over a sewing box. Okay. I got it where y'all can see the machine, okay? Well... I should have moved the rest of them leftovers. Okay. Now here's the fun part. I take um, Denise Opatcha 33 said, that's a good idea. We'll have to try it. Well, let me know how it come out for you. Thank you. Sharon says, I have to go, but I have to watch more later. I love hearing about your life. God bless you and all of your others, the subscribers. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I selected the replay button. So if anybody needs the replay, they are, they welcome. Um, if you can see on this one, I kind of press the seams open on the strips and then i'm gonna line up this seam here to the first seam on my uh on my uh script to uh go ahead and sew these together and yes i lock in the seam i just take a couple stitches forward and a couple of stitches back to lock it in and I'm going to move this to this side in case it's blocking. Okay, that's a strip. And this is a part of the fun, y'all. <laughs> now, some people have the, um, the fourth inch seam allowance marker where you can magnetically put it on your machine or it could come with your machine someone's foots and stuff once you purchase it me i'm just using the line that I that is drawn here now 
I'll sew it back and forward, but this is when the party starts. You just continue to do them like this in a chain stitch pattern. And once I get them all stitched up like this, I take them back over to my iron and I press them to one side. Press that seam to one side. And if you have a quarter inch foot on your sewing machine, you can also use that foot to uh, guide for how deep your uh, seam is supposed to be. And I'm sewing on a Juki, a Juki a QL2000. And my machine is old, y'all. <laughs> my machine probably nine or ten. No, it's more than nine. It might be ten years old or more. I forgot the year I got it, so... Line up these seams. To line them up with the seams, just help it to nest. It nests so much better. And I hold my finger. I'm using my finger for when it nests to um, just keep it in line. So I try not to go over my one-fourth inch seam allowance. And that's something that take practice as well. And if some quilts out here could use a five eight seam allowance. But I know when you're sewing clothing and making clothes or something to wear, you use a five eight seam allowance. Um certainly uh sharon says i'm sure happy you can use your hand and show us what to do oh thank you sharon i'm happy to be doing it denise says that's a good idea i will try okay i had missed some messages excuse me let me mute y'all my silence acted up. Excuse me. Okay, I'm back. Sorry for that, but I have chronic sinus and seem like these different seasons. I don't worry about how much be hanging off or be over, hanging over. I just go ahead and line it up, get everything like it's supposed to be, and go on sew it. And I can sit down here, y'all, over half of the night soon. But that's when I have something I need to do. I just go and try to get it done. I like it when these seams are nesting and lock. I almost cut my thread, y'all. I sew these for a while and then I clip them all apart and take them to my iron and press them to one side. Come on back. Keep building up. Until I have a full panel like that.
Let me uh, invite y'all on June the 24th at 12 o'clock noon Central Time. I will be doing a Zoom live with uh, Quilton for the Soul. And any and everyone is welcome to join in. I left the link in the description of this video. So anybody want to come in and be a host, you're welcome to come in to uh, be seen as a host. And if you ask, you know, need help or have questions, if someone would be in there that can help you, that's we just creating a place where we can teach on a broadly scale. Oh, I cut my thread. Let me put that back. <laughs> okay, I sold that back. Sometimes y'all know threads do break. They're breaking your machine and stuff, and you be like, I got to start back over. No, you just go a little bit past, go back a little bit from where the thread broke it and start and come up to it. But when you start, lock in that stitch a little bit. Ha oh. Hi, Kathy Quilts Craft. She said Diane 57 said, Hello, Miss Ellen. Oh, thank you, Kathy. Kathy, I still haven't forgot about you. I've been a little depressed too. Cause I lost my sister. And I'm trying to bounce back, you know. I try to keep going with what I know how to do. But I will get that to you. I still have it for you. It's yours. Your name is all over it. It ain't going nowhere but to you. Just give me a little time. I know you probably been waiting on me a couple of months now, but life has happened to me. When somebody... <laughs> Asked me for help and they need it right then. And in this case, it was my sister, but she wasn't the one calling me asking for the help. Somebody else called. And when they called, I hurry up to try to get to them. That's just like prayer. When somebody asks me for prayer, I start on in. You be going through something, you know, but you ain't expecting nobody to turn around and pray for you a week later after you done went through the problem. You need that prayer right then. So that's just how I do it. If I was going to stay here in this house, y'all, I, the basement been painted, so I was going to put a TV down here, my filing cabinet so I can store um, all my fabric and stuff properly. I was going to kind of cut them and kit them up because I still have the little band rolls I made. <laughs> you know how a lot of people call their fabric jelly rolls or like jelly rolls i just said band roll because i would stick a big old rubber band around it to hold all my fabric together and i was trying to prepare all this stuff so i can store it up in my filing cabinet and i have i have three filing cabinets now y'all i have the two big ones that's about seven feet tall and the front top slides out and I can store my books in the top shelf. But then I have the other four drawers, like deep, wide, long drawers. And I have two of those. I painted those that uh, aqua blue. I love that color, aqua blue. And I have another filing cabinet that is about five feet tall maybe and i have not painted it i haven't done anything to it but wiped it down to clean it up some and 
I was thinking if I had to get a school bus, y'all, that I would just put that cabinet in my kitchen because I don't want no wood and no box. I don't want any of that. I don't want anything a rat can cut through because I don't want no rat on my bus or in my RV or whatever I got. I just can't do a rat. My my granddaughter got a hamster. And I be having issues with that hamster, y'all. So I said, oh, this clearly got to be a mental thing here or something. I can't do that. Certain stuff I can't do. You'll be looking for your pet. And if your pet in my house or your pet bothering me, you have to make sure they are properly put up or they are properly in their environmental cage or whatever you have for them because certain animals I can't do. And I got certain I just will not let into my house. And one of them can be a snake. I ain't letting no snake in. A snake is a snake no matter which way you flip-flop or turn it. I can't do it. I went to my niece's house not probably last year. Come to find out she had a snake in her house in a cage. And I politely got my purse and I got up and I said, I'll see you later. I don't do snakes. She was like, no, no, don't go, don't go. I said, baby, if I don't go, I'm going to kill your snake. <laughs> Me and a snake can't be in the house together. And I have had it to happen to me, you know. But I just think about the word of God. You knew it was a snake when you let it in. <laughs> let me check my messages. Um, Judy L. said, hello. Hi, Judy L. Welcome in. Welcome in. I'm so glad you could stop by. Say hello. Jazzy Joyce said, hi, Miss Ellen. Just stop by to say hello. How you doing, Miss Jazzy Joyce? So glad you could stop by. Uh, Denise O'Patrick 33 said, hamster had one as a child. It got out of its cage. Dad caught it, and then we used a old-fashioned clip clothespin on it door. Love that little creature. Oh, my goodness. Denise Sopatra 33 is reminding everybody to give me the thumbs up. If you're new, please give me the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing. It'll help boost my activities on YouTube. And it'll help other beginners to find my channel. So thank you for your support. I was thinking, y'all, I haven't made 1,000 subscribers yet. And I'm always talking about this on my channel. But I was thinking of something great to do, like a game or something to kind of boost my subscribers. But I'm not going to do it because I had one. But that's a very expensive idea. The reason I said it because I'm planning another cruise coming this November. And I thought about I could do some kind of game or something and let somebody win away. But I don't think. I don't think I'm going to do it like that. I'm just going to wait on God. I like having fun, but I can do it in another way. I can do it in another way. So <laughs> who knows? My channel get going and start getting good. It, I probably will have different events that um, 
I share with other friends and subscribers. Hi, Janice Miller. She said, hello, Miss Ellen and everyone. Just checking in. Thank you, Janice. Do give me the thumbs up. I appreciate your support. Thirty-three said, where are you cruising to? Where? YouTube, but uh, hell, if I got your email, I can uh, let you know. <laughs> It's going to be fun. And this time, I'm taking my featherweight with me. I'm taking my featherweight sewing machine and a couple kits or something I can be sewing on. Once you get on the ship, you know all your food and stuff is free. Free, 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 free as a bird. All your drinks, free. You can drink much as you want. You have a refrigerator in your cabinet, your cabin. Well, I almost cut my thread again. But you don't cut your thread. When you chain pieces, you just go, go, go until you down to the last one. And I'm doing mine by panel. So I created that panel. Now I'm doing this panel. And when I get through with this panel, I have to finish doing this panel. And when I do that panel, I have three panels done. And I like doing it like this. I ain't no quilt police, y'all. I just show y'all how I do it, and I like doing it that way. Everybody sews and do things a little different. And that's what makes sewing world unique, you know. Everybody learns and do stuff a little bit different. And that's okay. That's actually a good sign. Because you might have a technique that I ain't never seen before. I'm sorry. Let me check these messages. Uh, Denise Opeshi 33. Oh, okay. I read that. She said, where are you going? But, you know, I do have some dream trips that I love to go on, and one of them is Canada. I love to go to Canada. And I live and nothing happened. I'm going one of these days, too. <laughs> um, well, look at that. I have an off cut. See how that kind of off cut because it was folded? I'm not going to throw it away. I'm going to lay it to the side right now, temporary. And when I'm down to the last, I go back. I just want to make sure I get these seams to nest. And you know when I nest them, let me show you what I'm talking about. I nest the seam, then I have that overhang. You see that green on there? I don't worry about that. I just make sure I nest my seams. Can you see that? Get these seams to uh, lay in here together. And when I'm sewing, y'all, I thought I had more bobbins in here than I have, but I have at least 10 in here that I thread. Before I start sewing anything, I thread up me at least 10 bobbins. And this machine really don't use up bobbins that fast. That's one of the reasons why I like it so much. It You can sew a lot. You can get a lot done with these bobbins. And I also, if you don't have the um, Lori Holt thing, 
that you can put on your sewing machine to keep you lining it up. I took, I took a permanent black marker and I lined it up a piece of cardboard a paper or something to my one fourth inch seam allowance mark and i drew a little line it's a bit faded now but i can still see it i drew that little line out here where i could you know line it up out here and still so i could have brought it all the way down this sewing table too but i didn't want to mess up the ruler part because i do use this ruler when i'm sewing Hi, Brenda Foley. How you doing? I'm so glad you can join me. She said, hello, just coming to give thumbs up. Got to work. Thank you, Brenda. I appreciate you. I appreciate y'all for coming in, being with me. Now, this block here is a little bit tricky. It's a little bit tricky. Looked like it was a little cricket. Or should I say crooked? <laughs> I remember having a conversation with my granddaughter, y'all. Telling my granddaughter, you know what? I know by you being raised in the city, you talk a lot different from I do. I said, but honey. Here's another piece. I said, yo, grandma done worked in the fields, done chopped. I said, done chopped cotton. <laughs> chopped cotton, picked cotton, put it in the sack, weighed cotton. And she said, mama, it ain't cotton. I said, I know, but I've been saying it all my life. And now you want to change the way I talk. <laughs> Oh, I'll be laughing, y'all. I'll be laughing. It is kind of funny, but that's the correct English. How they, you know, someone will tell you the correct pronunciation. I be trying. It ain't guaranteed I'm going to get it every time, but I try. I was raised in the South. I was raised to do hard work. And when you raised to work hard like I have in my life, you gonna have some issues when you get my age. I'm not saying you're gonna, everybody gonna be sick. I'm just saying you're gonna have some kind of issues. Cause I done drove tractors. Well, we own it, two tractors. And I used to drive one and my brother would drive one. And I can tell from the way he walks now, he done worked way too hard in his life. He can't really hardly stand up by himself. But he stands up and he walks with a cane. He get done what he want to get done, but... Can y'all see that miter seam in this block? That's one of the miter seams I had. Oh my goodness. Hey, hold on a minute. I'm on a live. Can I call you back? Ain't nothing wrong, is it? Yeah, I'll call you back. You know, the day Tuesday. All right. Kiss Mila for me. Love y'all. Okay. Okay. Bye-bye. Sorry about that, child. That was my daughter in Mississippi. Where as soon as I get my RV, man, I'm headed straight that way. I'm going to be driving. I ain't going to be worried about will somebody drive me. <laughs> Ooh, I'm not going to worry about that part. 
Because I get tired of I'll be at a rest area, a rest stop, a hotel, or somewhere. Okay. I be telling them they be working hard. You got to save sometimes, save up to enjoy yourself. I always dreamed of being able to travel and go somewhere. Who would have thought I'd catch an airplane and go anywhere? Who would have thought it? I knew the, I knew about an airplane years ago. It's just the fact that I had never flew, had never been on one, and I had it on my bucket list of thing to do, you know, but never did it. And I always wanted a sister or somebody to go with me so I can enjoy it. I never got that either. So I experienced it for myself, by myself. And when I think about that child coming up in high school, I supposed to have been an airline stewardess. Only thing about that is my father was not finna let me fly all the way to California for a job. <laughs> and the, they had agreed that I could stay in school. And I'm like, if they gonna let me stay in school, my whole life would have been different. I don't know if it would have been good. I think the one I had here now was pretty good. I didn't lock in that stitch. But God knows best. He didn't let me go out there. So I wound up taking secretarial training. I went to school to be a secretary, y'all. I went to school for quite a few things, though. I, I did um, secretarial training. I did uh, beauty, hair, and uh, I went to Odessa College of Beauty that was located in Gary, Indiana. I attended that, and I used to do my own hair, my own makeup. I mean, I liked it. I really liked it. And let me see, did I go to school for anything else? No, but I think I took a few crash studies. I don't know who that is. I took a few crash studies in uh, business. But it was more on the tax system or the tax filing fear. And later down the road, my daughter did the same thing. I couldn't see that white and I was finna store us on. Well, I have two daughters have their tax um, license. Because taxes was a thing that I thought was so neat and so good and so great to be in. And today, the only thing I can tell you is when you're filing your taxes, you round, you round everything up. You don't round down. And every year they had it where you had to renew your uh, P10 number. I didn't like that. When they cut that out, I was so happy. You have to renew your P10 every year, paying all that money. But then on the other side, you made good money too. I really liked it that. Um, I don't know what all I've been in, though. Know. I try not to get, do stuff too much now because I stay sick a lot.
I have things I'm supposed to have been having surgery for that I just flat foot refused to have the surgery. Because I'm like, if I go keep having all these surgeries, I ain't going to even be good enough to play with a cat. <laughs> so I said, no, it ain't bothering me now. Don't mess with it. If it come in later, then I'll try to fix it later. If it's not too late to get it fixed. But I done been through a lot of stuff in my life. And someone has always been there to comfort me. To bring me a relief of stress for it. Someone has been there to take up a lot of that pain. I have been so sick sometimes, y'all. I still be, I will still be someone. I will be sick and someone. And if my daughter and them catch me, why are you sewing? Why are you not in the bed laying down? I'm tired of that bed. That bed steal your energy, take your strength from you. So I get up out the bed. You know what? Before I sew this, I'm going to check my messages. I'm sorry. I've been running my mouth. <laughs> I'm good at running in mouth, ain't it? Uh, Denise O'Petri. Okay, I saw that. Okay. Everything still the same. Sewing is something I really love to do. I really love it. It brings me joy, joy, joy. I'm kind of paying attention, y'all, because I ain't trying to overshoot this seam allowance. That's the only thing about sewing them together like this. You got to watch that seam allowance. And I try to hold my press open seams down because, oh, I cut my thread. That's fine. I cut my thread, but I try to hold them seams down because I don't want them to fold back on me. Because if they fold back, I don't have my thread cutter down here with me, y'all. I like that little thing. Purple. I just cut them a loose, take them over to the uh, ironing board after I get them all stacked up here, and press them open to one side. And when I do that, I pile them up again. Come back and sit down and chain piece again. <laughs> Just keep chain piecing until you got them all into a long panel like that. I don't even use a thread catcher on my sewing machine, but that's okay, too. Okay, got to put on my shoe. Okay, now... I don't know who that is. I need to move the camera, y'all, so close your eyes if it bothers you. Okay, I'm going to set you right on here so I can go over to the ironing board. Right over here. My iron is hot. Okay. Maybe I can do it from this end. 
Can you see me on this end here? Okay. All I do is kind of set it up there. <laughs> I picked up the bottle of water and pressed it to one side. And I leave it laying there and lay me out another one. And I keep going and keep going. See, on these colors, it's really no darker side for me. So I just press them open. And when I go back and sew them, everything's going to nest automatically. And I just keep stacking them up. And I have about three or four motors so before I cut my thread. And these are the steps I take to make it like this. And just think, you get five or six panels, you have your big king-size quilt or a queen-size quilt. And on, uh, on June the 24th, I plan to quilt this on the zoom with quilting for the soul and i will be sewing on my domestic juki machine just show y'all how i quilt them up on my machine i haven't really picked a design or a style or anything yet it probably would be something new mandarin like I saw a Nemandrum. I don't know if I could be repetitious like that, but it worth a try to see how repetitious I could be. Like maybe do some Nemander with hearts or something. Do some Mandarin. And I just stand here and press all of these unless and I get tired. If I'm tired, I'm gonna sit down. So what I have pressed, but I have to come back and iron some more when I can stand up again. Ooh. And I love doing this. This is my television. If I'm not watching YouTube, I'm sewing. And I really like sewing. And I like sometimes putting a spinning twist to what I'm making. And that could be anything from embroidery to um, just creating something different, using a pattern that some you know you people have used for years, and put a spinning twist to it, 
Um, I'm almost done with these, so. I'll be back checking the messages in a minute. And this will be a lot of strips, you know, to this chain piece together. And when you get through, you have your blocks. Now this take chain piece into another, another level. Because you can do it block, block, block. But I chose to do it strip by strip. Anything worth making going to take a little time to do. I have my little cutie frame still sat up behind this uh, quilt top here. I'm not going to use that right now. Few more to go. Okay, two more. <laughs> Last one. I like it. I like it. Now, I get the other few, uh, two or three I got right there. Later. Let me see. Oh, that's nice, Denise So Patchy 33. She said, I use your channel and other channels to keep me company while I sew. That is nice. I um okay, I have them all kind of pressed to one side, and I just do them like I was doing the initial you okay see i have a green and i have a white so what i'm gonna do is i don't line up the fabric i line up the seam see that so it a nest line up the seam and then come in here This quilt measures, when I get it done, 88 inches just with these blocks, making them like this in this panel. And once I'm done making them, I can always go back and um, add a border. Trim away some excess that didn't uh, fit right. Like on that one, I'm going to have some excess to trim off. But I just chain piece them, keep chain piecing. Line up that seam. All I wanted to do is nest. And I try to hold my seams down so they won't flip back on me. All 
right. I don't know how long I've been on yet. Hi, Marty. Hi, do you ever quilt by hand? I sure do. <laughs> I sure do. That's how I first learned to start quilting a quilt by hand. Uh, and there's different techniques and styles you can do as well by hand. Um, I have a video down my list here where I did a tie quilt. That is hand done. But quilting by hand consists of if you're going to sew a design into the quilt, a special design, you can even draw that design using that uh, water soluble or a heat erasable pen. You can draw with those and go back and erase your drawing after you done sewn through the markings. My granddaughter down here, y'all. <laughs> Hey, baby, what can I do for you? Say hello. Hi. She said hi, everyone. She acting like she's shame. <laughs> Someone asked, you ever quote my hand? Mm-hmm, that's who I was talking to. I mean, come in there. I had got so good at quilting by hand, I used to cut, take a quilt top and estimate how many days it'll take me to complete it. I cut my thread, y'all. Right in my mouth. Okay. But can y'all, uh, let me show you this. Now, when I iron these open and press them to one side, they get a little bit bigger, right? This is all I do, and I just keep continue to do it. Even when I'm making the small poster stamp quilt, I use this process. I, but I, I have my panels been a little shorter. They haven't been this long on the small one inch poster stamps. But you can make them long like this and cut them down. Okay, I'm gonna lay these over here since I cut my thread. But make sure you line up your seams instead of the fabric. Once you got them seams lined up, line up your one-fourth inch seam allowance. And y'all can tell when I get a little quiet. Because I'm trying to watch these seams. And I just continue to sew it until I'm done. Now, when I be in a hurry to make a quilt like this, I sew all day and half of the night. And I have to stop whatever I'm doing, break my sewing machine down, clean it out, Change the needle. Just get it ready for some uh, heavy do the sewing. <laughs> I need to mute y'all again. Excuse me a moment. My sinuses is. Let me see. No. Okay, sorry about that, y'all. 
my sinuses is just killing me kind of chronic a little bit it's getting better because i had a sinus infection and that sinus infection was a booger bear it was a beast And on top of all of that, I forgot my doctor's appointment. Wind up missing my appointment. So. Uh. Hi, Auntie Ellen. How you doing? Welcome, welcome. Glad you could join me. I'm um, putting together some 2.5 inch blocks. And I'm showing how I put them together as strips. Let me pause in case somebody new came in. Uh, I sew them together like this. I take three with the fabric, 2.5 inch strips, and I sew them together using the mattered uh, seam join. And once I get all three of them sewn together, then I take all the colors I have my... Uh, strings sewn together and i sew them all together to make a panel but this is just for the colors i do two of them i sew one panel and another one and i sew them together then i press the seams open once i press all my seams and stuff open i go ahead and press with some heat and then i cross cut them 2.5 inch strips which give me this panel here. It makes that panel. And I'm going to do about six of these, which will produce and make a king size quilt when I'm done, because I will be putting a border around them. These one strips come to 88 inches long. And when I frame it out, it'll be about a hundred and something wide quilt top. Um, uh, I need to mute y'all a minute again. Excuse me. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. But I love doing this, y'all. I'm still dealing with chronic sinus itch issues. And let me try some of this. Okay, I have a few more of these here. I can uh, chain chain piece. <laughs> Trying to be sure I stay on my one fourth seam inch allowance. I mean, if you bother or waver a little bit. I ain't the quilt police. I ain't going to come and take loose your quilt. <laughs> no, but I'm lining up these seams. That's all I be worried about, getting the seams lined up. Because everything else can be trimmed away later. And I lock in my stitches on the end. And I can still see my one inch, one fourth inch seam allowance. Auntie Ellen, if you still here, I saw the woman you did. That was beautiful. Um, I have something like that I've been working on. I was doing a portrait of myself, but when I looked at it, I said, she don't look too much like me. 
She have some of the features, but I didn't never finish it. Now, I think I'll pull that back out and finish her. But I'm going to finish this quilt first. I have projects I started and put them to the side somewhere. <laughs> We probably all is a little guilty of that one. But I want to get my little stuff organized where I can uh, not worry about, you know, if I started this and didn't finish. Once I'm organized, I know I'm not finished and I'll go back and work on it. I still have my, um, I have a portable air conditioning unit and I got that to put on my bus, but just in case I wind up with the RV, class A RV, I'm still taking my portable air condition and I have a Wimna unit as well, so... I'm pro I know I'm probably going to uh, leave that in storage until I come back to move all my things back home because I'm planning on repairing my home. I'm going to repair it, but I'm not going to live in it. More like the fabric will be living there. <laughs> I'm going to be on the road, y'all. Whatever it is I get, I'm going to be traveling. I find it joyful to travel. And by me sewing, I'm going to take my sewing with me. I fill up my fowler cabinets every time I, uh, I go towards home. Just fill up my cabinets with fabric and I can create projects. I have my AccuQuilt Go Cutter with me. Um, I just probably need to build up my, uh, die cutting plates. I kind of wished I had got to go electric. <laughs> and I still might eventually wind up getting to go electric. Because I can still use the dies I have to the go in the go electric. And the mats for it, you know, will work in the same unit. Only if you have the go me, then that would be different. So I knew right off I didn't want the go me. And I did I tell y'all about when I got my go? It comes with the um starter die cutter and I bent the blade on it. I was just cutting, y'all. I was enjoying it. Oh, I like this. Putting 10 layers under there. I said, well, I can cut 10 layers. I'm going to do that 10 layers. And bent my blade on the small two and a half inch square. Now, the rest of the squares work on it. I didn't throw the die away. I kept it. And eventually, I was able to get another uh, starter die, the one they send you with the kit. I got a new one. And that's the die I was using to cut all of my 2.5-inch blocks with. But I found something even better. I got the... Oh, excuse me. I got the 2.5 inch strip cutters. You can cut different sizes, but it gives you at least four strips on one pass. And you can put up to six layers on there. And I had made some videos after I messed up my die cutter warning everybody, you know, if you got a die, it said only put six layers on there. 
I said, please use six layers because you're going to whoop your dad and you're going to have to buy another one. It will whoop them blades in a minute. Okay, y'all. My last one here. I don't have anything extra to sew it to, so you know what? I'm going to take one of these here and sew it to this side. <laughs> Line up the seams. As long as I'm lining up my seams and keep them straight, I can press them seams to one side and be done so fast. I might be sewing slow, but this is a method of change, chain piecing. And it helps you to get through, you know. It helps you to get done what you have to get done. And I have to watch my seams because they show sure will try to fold over on me. I had one just fold on over on me. But that's okay. I'm not going to take it or lose. I'm going to let that be for now. But if I wanted to take it or lose, I can take these snips and go in here and snip just at one side. I'm not cutting my seam. I'm just snipping the fabric and it'll lay over. See? It'll lay over. You can see, maybe you might can see how I snipped it because it don't go all the way. But yes, that keep down the bulkness when you quilting it. Keep from being too thick. And whew, I still got it attached. Okay. Now, all of these need to be ironed well pressed out. And once I press them out, I just continue to sew. Or I can just sit here and continue to sew and press them when I'm done sewing. Whatever works best for y'all. Just don't forget to always press your seams. It makes everything lay a little bit better. And there you go. Some of them I got to trim up. The seam ain't too bad either. Have to watch it and keep it on like a fourth inch seam allowance. Well, hi, L Chimes. How you doing? She said, hello, Miss Ellen and fellow quilters. So happy to finally catch one of your live shows. How are you all doing? I'm doing great. How are you doing today? She said, hopefully the sun is shining in your area and you're having a blessed and beautiful day. It's beautiful here. It really is. Um, It's been so nice lately. I even thought about setting up a tent and doing a live from outside one of my live days. And I'm highly considering it. I'm highly considering it. It's, it's just something to do. Well, I'm not going to keep y'all long. I'm going to go on and end it here. Let me thank each and every one of y'all for coming in. I thank y'all for asking questions and joining me. Uh, that's what I'm here for. I'm showing y'all how I put it together. So you may have a skill or something that you can see or twerk it, you know, to make it your own. That's okay. You know, that's a good thing. You making it your own. I like making things my own. I take different patterns and different blocks and change it around. Um, I'm like hypothetically 
the churn dash block. I like that block. I like and I find it fascinating to add patches in it. But did you know you can fussy cut fabric? You can put uh, the heating bun on the back of the fabric and fussy cut it and put it in that block like you fussy cut a block. But you can center it in that block and it makes your quilt different. It just makes the whole thing different and so beautiful. And I just wanted to share that with y'all. Thank y'all for coming in. I'm going to let y'all go here now. Bye now. Have a blessed day. Bye, everyone. Um, thank you, Auntie Ellen. Bye. If I can find my... Okay, there it is. Mm -hmm.